<laughs> the little gymnastics at Henner's house here. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> we can work out anywhere, right? <laughs> So we had the most incredible visitor yesterday. Um, his name is Kyle Maynard. Some of you may have heard of him. He is a uh, congenital amputee. All four of his limbs have been missing since birth. And he came by the Gracie Academy. He had the most incredible upbringing. You have to check out his story. He was a, uh, a wrestler in high school. He even played football. He, pl he wrestled in college. And now he trains uh, jiu-jitsu. So we were hooked up through mutual friends and we set it up, you know, I spoke to him and we set it up for him to come to the Gracie Academy and, and train, you know, and I just thought, you know, he was excited about the opportunity, but I was more excited about the opportunity to meet him and to be able to train with, with some of his, someone of his, you know, physical limitations, if you want to call him that, to, uh, to see how Jiu Jitsu is being modified and adapted and can be modified for someone like him since, you know, in the end, it's all about modification from my grandfather to us and uh, you know to everyone around the world so I couldn't wait so he came in here and uh, man what a cool dude man I just I didn't know what to expect I know he'd be cool but I didn't think he'd be this cool you went in and we did our warm-up of running around and he's running around you know doing everything we're doing and he's moving around and uh, making his own modified warm-up as we're doing our jog and then we did some shrimping and some rolling and uh, he's lo and behold he's shrimping and he's rolling and it was really cool because we're on the side mount escape chapter here in the master cycle and, uh, you know, I was very curious to see, bro, how do you, how do you move? And I, and I asked him a ton of questions and, you know, I said, so someone is side mounted on you, what do you do? And he showed me this kind of duck under, underhook, side mount, shoulder get up, where he goes to a single leg and uh, he has a tight single leg control. So he bumps out the back, gets an underhook, bumps out the back, shoulders up, and then holds onto your leg and puts so much pressure on your thigh that when you turn to guard, he's already passing. So we did that as the whole class, you know, and he helped me show the technique to the whole class. It was super dope. He was kind of a guest instructor. And it was just so cool to see all the students because they're all watching this. And I think, um, you know, I know how I was 100% fascinated by how effectively he has modified uh, jiu-jitsu and, and the grappling arts to suit his, uh, his physical restrictions. And, uh, and I think the students were equally kind of motivated, you know. And we have some old students in the mat and we have some out of shape students in the mat. And we have some, you know, women and men and many people who I think, you know, often make excuses of why they aren't good at certain techniques or why they can't be as good as another student. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was, it was a very big treat for everyone to see that, you know, Kyle comes in there and, 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 and with, you know, with his limb limitations, he's able to modify and adapt and be very effective with it. And uh, man, it was just, it was just remarkable. So we did the techniques and then it came to the spark class. So I had him roll, I got to roll with him a bunch. And uh, it was just really remarkable. Like, and I'm just trying to throw myself around and try to experience as many positions as possible with him just to see how he behaves in them. So, so I can learn from him as much as possible. The things that shocked me the most were number one, his ability to be underneath someone and then maneuver his way out to a neutral position and then reverse the situation with good pressure. Great guard passes, he uses his head incredibly well and he uses his arms and he basically stuffs the feet, puts himself into a half guard and then basically does a sitting pass out to the side, gets the side control, prefers side control over full mount obviously because he can be perpendicular and have better base. It's, it's crazy, anything is possible. He's very good, he's not just you know a, a, a blue belt for his you know restrictions and his, his, his limitations. He's a legitimate blue belt. I mean, he will hang and tap and choke other blue belts on the mat. Amazing athlete, dedicated practitioner of the art, and uh, the Jiu Jitsu family should be very proud to have him as one of us. And, and we only hope that, you know, people seeing this video and us sharing this will encourage other people out there with different limitations, maybe not so obvious as Kyle's, but uh, limitations nonetheless that they maybe created in their mind or, or believe is, is real for their body. and. Uh, you know, hopefully it will encourage them to get off the couch and onto the mat. So, man, I hope you guys love watching it as much as I loved rolling with them. And uh, after we rolled, of course, I was so grateful that I had to give him the ultimate gift. The Henna Gracie Exotic Acai Roots Bowl. Cool. This stuff is legit, man. Very, very good.
So explain that technique right there, bro. <laughs> You know, it was, uh, I used to use a prosthetic spoon. Mm. I would go and wrap around the end of my arm mm. and uh, I'd go and attach the spoon. When I was like younger, like four years old. And like we'd go and leave it at home and like, you know, forget it, go out to eat at a restaurant. Like, my mom and grandma would feed me. And so eventually my dad, he said, uh, he said in an interview one time on TV, he was like, I was going to have to learn how to eat on my own or starve. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of sink or swim. Like, I got to figure it out. So the way that I go and pick up the spoon now, I'm just holding it between the ends of my arms and kind of. Like holding it in the end of my left arm and use my right arm just like swivel it and like swing it around and, and scoop it up. <laughs> if you're hungry enough, you'll figure it out, man. <laughs> my experience of ACE before was kind of lame. It was like the you know airport smoothie shop or something like that where I could add it as like the booster or something. This is pretty. This is pretty legit. I mean, there's a. Uh, the process that you had to go in to make this happen. I mean, you look like a mad scientist in there with the Vitamix going, you know, <laughs> making it happen. But what do we got in here? We got the brown rice krispies, the coconut, shredded coconut. I'm a huge coconut fan. Huge health benefits there. The um, bunch of uh, frozen fruit, um, some dried figs. Never had dried figs. Those are pretty legit. And uh, and then acai, and then, then all mixed together. So I'm loving it, man. This so is, uh, this is a new staple. You have a Vitamix or not? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen though. <laughs> One of my very first like exposure to jujitsu was um, it was some of the um, old <clears throat> older videos with um, with Orion, and so you know he was you know demonstrating some techniques and stuff like that, and so you know and just even seeing like those iconic green mats and I was like, you know, like, like I gotta go to this place. And um, just the, the history that you guys have there and even at the new location that you've like preserved this was really cool. Coming in and getting to go and see like the newspaper clippings and stuff like that, like that that made it real. I mean it's like, you know, this is not like this trend that's just like started up. I mean like Jiu Jitsu has like roots going through, you know, well over a you know, hundred years in history now. I mean it's incredible to see. I mean it's <clears throat> And the sport too, I think it's one of the most exciting things too, that like seeing what you guys are doing with the kids program. Like, I mean, I know as a kid for me, I didn't really go through that many instances of like bullying, but you know, there were times where it, coming from a wrestling background, it gave me that confidence to know that like I could take care of myself in, in some instances. And, and, and when you know that, then you don't have to use it. You know, it empowers you to just kind of like diffuse the situation. and and move through life without like feeling like, you know, threatened or like you're not enough. So seeing the kids get into it today, that was really cool. I've gone through, I started Jiu Jitsu in 2005 and it's something where I've had periods of time in my life where I was really active in the training and periods of time where I wasn't as active in the training. And I notice that when I am active in the training, when I am focused on it, that like everything in life is a little bit better. You know, it's, it's like I'm going through and, you know, even just like something that I would dread, like doing my taxes or something like that. It's like not as bad when I can like go in and I'm, you know, I'm doing jujitsu. It's like that time where it's like you're fully engaged in someone, you know, really like it's an amazing, amazing martial arts, an amazing sport because you're literally putting your life in somebody else's hands. And it, you know, it, you you go through and you kind of face life and death in every single session that you're in. And I think in confronting that, like it teaches you something kind of like about the bigger picture, right? It's not about getting like caught up in in like all the small like little day to day things that kind of come and hit us. It's it's about teaches us. It's really just a larger metaphor for life. You know, that's birth and death, like every single time that you get in and out of a choke. You know, on the at the surface level, um, the messages you know about not making excuses for your things, but going deeper beyond that, it's like, why would you want to do that, right? Why would you want to live that way in your life? And and I, you know, what, one of the things I try to get across to people is just to, like define that why, like why are you here on this planet? And you know, sometimes we don't necessarily know. I mean, we go through different things. We're kind of going through the motions. And we don't necessarily examine it. And for me, one of the most amazing but most difficult experiences in my life with me and Joey took on um, last year was to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And we'd project it's gonna take 15 days. By the fourth day, like I was pretty beat up. 
and I was ready to just like almost like call it quits. And I was in like significant amount of pain, you know, bear crawling for 38 miles, like elbows and feet swelling up, uh, almost like just, yeah, I mean, like, I was literally brought to tears, lying in my tent, crying by myself and thinking like, man, this is like, there's no way I'm gonna make this. And it was in that moment that, you know, for some reason it was like this promise that had popped into my head that we had given, gotten the honor from a mother of a um, fallen soldier to carry soldier's ashes. His name is Corey Johnson. And his mom asked me in a gym in Arizona, random meeting, if I would go and carry her son's ashes to the summit. And it was like, lying there and having that pity party for myself, I was like, there's no way, there's no freaking way that I'm gonna come home and tell her that I didn't make it. And, and so we did, you know, it wasn't easier. The pain didn't go away, but it was like in that moment, like made that decision to go and say like, you know what? Like, I don't care what else happens. Like I'm gonna go and move forward through this. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of the way that it is through life. Like some of the hardest things that we face are generally the things that ends up being the, the greatest gifts in the end. It's just sometimes when we're going through it, we don't see it that way. So for people that are, you know, struggling or just people in general that are trying to go and reach like a higher performance, higher potential in their life and just live a better quality of life. It's like, find that why, you know, in all that you do. But why, why are you here? That's why he's the best. <laughs> That's why he's I like your, get he's like Henderson. Evils. <laughs> he's like, all right, let me get back to my right. outside. <laughs> Go ahead, bro, get back Thanks, at it. Dude. I know you want to finish Absolutely. it. <laughs> <laughs> you earn your ball, homie. <laughs>makes up these crazy chokes <laughs> and he doesn't warn me. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thanks, bro.